Who's going to explain us a few things about bounding the i the length, sorry, of the first non-zero <coughs> Menikov function? Okay. Thank you, Jean-Philippe. So let me first thank the, the organizers, uh, Maya and Jean-Philippe, for giving me the occasion to speak here, and also the general organizers of the, of the seminar. There are many, so I won't uh, cite them all. Uh, so, so, so I also have to apologize as every other speaker, speaker this morning that my subject is not precisely about trans series, but it is somehow in the spirit of, uh, uh, of the semester. So it is... Uh, I, I, I would say it is related with tennis and it is related with objects coming from dynamical systems. And so it's not so kind of completely out of subject. Okay, uh, so essentially, I think everybody here knows uh, two classical problems in uh, uh, vector in somehow the study of differential equations in the plane. So the 16th Hilbert problem and the center problem. And uh, somehow what I will speak about is related to the infinitesimal. Of uh, 16th Hilbert. And center problem. So we start with uh, F, which is a polynomial. So this polynomial, it can be uh, real or complex. Essentially, everything, all the arguments will be complex, but let us for the moment assume that it is a real polynomial. And uh, uh, we consider the foliation, which is given by DF is equal to zero. Uh, so let me make some picture, assume something like this, and then Assume that we have a family of cycles gamma. So gamma belongs to gamma of t belongs to f minus one of t. And then we take a deformation. So the f df plus epsilon omega is equal to zero. And we consider the displacement function. So, so this is uh, this, uh, or, or rather, Poincare function. Sorry. So uh, p of t. So it is equal to t plus the sum of epsilon i m i of t, where i normally goes from one to infinity. So these functions are what is called uh, Melnikov functions. Uh, and uh, of course, what can happen is that the first one, uh, I mean, the first one can be zero or not zero. And if the first one is equal to zero, then one looks at the second one and so on. And what we are interested in the first non-zero Melnikov function. Let me denote that function m mu. So I suppose that m mu is not identically equal to zero and that m1 is identically up to m mu minus one is identically equal to zero, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Maybe I should uh, I should put it on the picture. So we take a transversal here uh, t, and on this transversal we look at the first return map of this deformed vector field, and so this is this first return map is. Uh, is a Poincaré uh, function. And uh, what we are interested in 
Yeah, yes, and this uh, transversal is parameterized by values so so this is somehow the object of our study what we want to see is what kind of function uh, this function m mu is so this is what i uh, mean so function m mu comes from dynamical system i mean from uh, from some vector field and uh, when i say tameness i wouldn't use the the word if, you, if I was not in a conference about tame geometry, it is somehow how complicated this uh, function m mu is. So why is it important? So how complicated is m mu? So uh, what we want to, to, we want to know some a priori estimate on the complication of the function m mu, depending only on f, on f, and on the cycle gamma. Uh, so let me say what is mu, what is, uh, yeah, yes, maybe I have to say that, uh, so uh, all I will speak about are results with, uh, so common work with Dmitry Novikov, who is here. Um, Laura Ortiz Bobadilla, Jesse Contigo Herrera. Donc, uh, uh, so Dmitry Novikov, he is from Weizmann Institute, and uh, Laura and Jesse, they are Mexican from UNAM. Okay, uh, so. So, so, so what is known? So uh, somehow the basis of everything is a theorem, which somehow I would attribute to Francoise uh, and Gavrilov. Uh, the theorem says that th this first non-zero Melnikov function is an iterated integral of length at most mu. Uh, so I will explain what is an iterated integral. So if this uh, m mu, so if mu is equal to one, what does this mean? M mu is just what is called an abelian integral. It is integral along gamma of the form omega by which we deform df. But so essentially, if one should understand what happens for M2. If one understands M2, everything is uh, then the same. So M2 is, I will write the formula, it is gamma omega prime omega so what is omega prime omega prime is d omega divided by df it is the gelfand lere derivative of omega so what does this mean so this means this is a uh, one form such that uh, omega prime veg df is equal to the two form d omega. So there is some freedom in the choices, but so this is uh, this omega prime. Uh, and uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, in order to consider uh, M2, do you need uh, M1 to be... to be equal to zero? Yes, 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 yes. So uh, I always, uh, I mean, there are some results uh, more general, but I will not speak about this. I always speak only about the first non-zero Melnikov function. So 
uh, I will consider M2 only if M1 is identically equal to zero. And so then one has such a formula. Uh, so uh, how does it work? Essentially, the idea is somehow, so first Francoise gave an algorithm for calculating the first non-zero Melnikov function under some condition. This condition was, uh, so it, it is usually called Francoise star condition, uh, which is that, so this star condition is if integral along gamma of omega is equal to zero, identically to zero. This is, uh, I would put other, it is any, any form eta. Uh, this is if and only if eta is of the form G DF plus DR. So this means that the form is relatively exact. And uh, this condition is not always fulfilled but it is quite often fulfilled. As here, I mean that G and R are polynomial. And uh, then actually, if, if I say the whole story, somehow uh, uh, the idea is what one can do if this story, if this is not, uh, not the case. And then actually we had a paper with, so Gebran, Uh, Pelletier and myself, in which we considered a special case. Somehow the idea is that uh, 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 in one sense, it is always the case. Of course, if you have a form which is of this, this type, then the integral is identically equal to zero, but the contrary is not true in general, but uh, somehow the idea is that it is true, but the, 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 uh, these functions are not necessarily polynomials. So you search for such functions G and R. And so how do you find these functions? Well, uh, how do you find this function G? Uh, you take this form eta, the form eta is given, you take D eta, and then you have uh, that D eta is equal to DG veg, df, so here you, you get zero. And so then you have that dg, uh, it is precisely uh, this one form omega prime that one is looking for. So you have uh, one form which veg df gives you the eta. And so somehow this is, uh, uh, so, so the idea is that the algorithm actually works without this condition uh, star but one has to go outside of the world of uh, polynomial forms. And so you get this function dg and uh, you, you get the form dg and then you want to know who is g. And then g is somehow the primitive of dg. And this somehow ex precisely explains, uh, uh, this is kind of the term dg. And so uh, how do you get M2? Actually, Francois's algorithm tells you that in order to get the, the, this form that you have to integrate, you have to perform two integrations. One integration, so you have, you can write that M2 is integral gamma of G omega, and G is an integral. So it is a double integral, integral on gamma, G is integral, of uh, omega prime of omega. It's kind of a thing like this. And this is somehow the sense of iterated intervals. You have to inter iterate twice and then somehow uh, the algorithm, I, I explained only the case up to level two, but it goes in essentially in the same idea further. And then this uh, uh, gives you that m mu is an iterated integral of length mu. But this is kind of, uh, this is very nice, this is very good, this is very important, but it is not, it depends on the deformation. So this is about depending on deformation uh, omega. 
And what we want is a bound which doesn't depend on the deformation. Yes. Sorry. No, no, no. I, I'm happy to. Okay. G is a function, yes. 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 So this is a notation for iterated integrals. It's a notation for iterated integrals. And so what does this notation mean? You have a first. Uh, so, so if you have iterated, if it is on the line, so on the line, so on the line, uh, on a segment, say, notation integral from zero to one of omega one up to omega n. This is by definition. This is integral from zero to one of integral from zero to t n, etc. Integral from zero to t one, uh, maybe t two. Integral from zero to t one of omega one. So you take the integral of this guy, then you take omega two, you take this guy, and so on. And then at the end, you put omega. N. So this is the iterated integral. And uh, okay, so this is from zero to one. And when you have your curve or cycle gamma, you parameterize it, and then you get, uh, you are in this situation. And so uh, what do we want to do? So now I explain somehow what is iterated integral. And we have, we can, we want to bound the length of this iterated integral. So this, this guy, in, if I have something which is written like this, this is an iterated integral of length n. But it can happen that you can simplify and that it is actually of length, of shorter length. So the question is somehow to have some bound for the, for the real, for the optimal length of an iterated integral. So problem. This is somehow the, the, the main object of the talk. So bound the length of M mu as an iterated is so it's a problem clear. Okay, so uh, there is one one case which has been uh, studied uh, before and which is very nice. So this is some this is a, a classical theorem. I would also say that this is a theorem where one has to put two authors together in order to have the the, the result. So there is one old theorem of Ilyashenko from 1969. So this is essentially. Uh, this is very much related with this condition, and uh, Francois' uh, 1998. And the theorem says, if f is generic, I will say in a moment what generic means, any deformation Uh, omega, then the first non zero Melnikov function, m mu, is an abelian integral. That is, length is equal to one. There is only one integration. So, uh, why is, uh, uh, let me say one word about uh, uh, why this is true. So you start with, uh, uh, with M mu. And uh, one knows, okay, so, so, so let me may, may, maybe say what is in the paper of Ilyashenko from 69. So he proves two things, but here we use one thing. This is that the, by monodromy, 
I, I will explain in a moment more precisely what is monodromy. By monodromy, uh, one cycle generates all cycles. So we will look at, uh, we complexify everything. We look at the complex vibration defined by F and uh, we look at the complex fiber of, uh, of given by the first integral and we have our cycle maybe something like this this is f minus one of t it looks like something like this inside lies the cycle gamma i don't know how it is but we have a real cycle when we complexify we have a cycle gamma and now uh, we consider the vibration which is defined by this uh, by, by this function so here we have f which goes from C, essentially C2 to C. F is the first integral, we complexify everything. We have some critical, uh, so some atypical values of the vibration. And we have a typical value, which is somehow this value. Maybe change the color to this. So this is some typical value which downstairs we have something like this and then we took we take paths uh, which go around all the atypical values and each along each one uh, this is a vibration and when we take out the atypical fibers and so uh, we can move this uh, fiber to nearby fibers and what will happen in general is that this cycle will not uh, uh, come back to itself. There will be some non-triviality in the in the monodromy. We will, this cycle can can give some other cycle. For instance, this cycle plus a cycle like this. And then we look at the orbit of all these cycles. And so, what uh, Ilyashenko shows it is that under generic. Hypothesis. Uh, the orbit of gamma is the whole H one. So, so what, uh, he considers the, uh, the 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 orbit in homology the whole H one of f minus one of t. So why is this important? So if you have such a situation, what you will have is you start with integral gamma of omega equals zero. So, so, so you, you, sorry, you suppose m1 equal to zero. So this is the same thing as saying that the integral along gamma of omega is identically equal to zero. Then you do analytic continuation. And analytic continuation, if you have that uh, this integral along one cycle for one value of t is identically is equal to zero, you move it analytic, I mean, do analytic continuation, it will stay equal to zero. But then if you know that the monodromy generates the orbit is whole H1, then this means that the integral, so this plus Ilyashenko implies that the integral for any delta is identically equal to zero. And now you can apply uh, Francois's condition, and then you get that uh, this, uh, so you will have such a situation. So Francois's algorithm with the G polynomial. And now uh, you have, so this gives you that M2 is integral of G omega long gamma. So this is also a polynomial form. And so on. 
And so uh, you do all the time, you, you don't uh, quit the, the world of polynomial forms. And so then by induction, you get that M mu is an abelian integral. This is somehow the kind of a result that we want to have. What is nice here is that, so this is true for any deformation omega. You, uh, it is a property of the of f of the first integral that for any deformation you can have the, the m mu is not necessarily mu is not necessarily equal to one. It is not necessarily the first function. It can be the thirty fifth function. If this is the thirty fifth function, is the first non-zero. It is an abelian integral. So this is somehow uh, the situation. Okay. So. Uh, I, I didn't say what is generic, maybe, uh, I mean, these are classical conditions for genericity. I, maybe I will not uh, spend time on it. Mu doesn't, doesn't depend uh, neither on uh, omega. Uh, no, uh, mu does depend on omega. Yes, 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 yes. Not, not always. Uh, usually it will depend on omega. Yes, I, I think always it, it depends on omega. Yeah. But it's what is important somehow in what world leaves the first non zero function. Yeah. Okay, and so uh, then there was a, a, a nice theorem by Gavrilov and Ilya, it was 2005, where they, they gave a, a more general condition under which and the new is an abelian integral. So I will not formulate precisely the result because what we do is a generalization of the result. And so it will be kind of a special case uh, of their, I mean, their result will be a special case of our result, but uh, of course uh, we have to give them historic credit for, for what they obtained. So uh, uh, recall, let us recall that abelian integral, this uh, corresponds to L of M mu is equal to one. Uh, let me uh, mention also theorem of, uh, so there are two theorems, one theorem of Uribe, it's Marco Uribe, who was my former PhD student, and the uh, theorem of uh, Jesse Pontigo was also my former uh, PhD student. And uh, some, uh, so uh, the case, what was studied by Marco Ribe, he studied the case where F is a product of Li x y, so where Li are lines. but under some generic assumption. And the JC also, sorry. Ah, okay, yes, I understand. Here it's okay or? Okay, this is the limit of, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, okay, so, so uh, what, uh, uh, yes, so, uh, Uribe, it is case of L lines, and uh, Pontigo, it is case of uh, good divides. I will not go into the definition, but it is kind of if you have, uh, I don't know, a line and a parabola or something like this, uh, then it, it works uh, well. And so what it, these are the assumptions, and they sh show that under such assumption, uh, length of uh, m mu 
is at most two. And two is attained, so it is not somehow an empty, empty statement. Uh, one can obtain uh, as first non-zero Melnikov function iterated integrals of length two. Okay, so uh, the main result I would, I would like to speak about So this is a common result with uh, um, so Novikov, Ortiz, uh, Pontigo, and myself, uh, which says so for any so there are two parts for any. Uh, deformation df plus epsilon omega equal to zero m mu is of length bounded by a number which we call depth k, which depends on f and on gamma. I will define the depth after the statement of the theorem. And the second statement, uh, if k is equal one or two, there exists a deformation of depth k. Okay. So what is the depth? So, uh, so we have to work when we work in uh, with uh, iterated integrals. So when when one works with uh, with uh, with abelian integrals, one works in homology. But when one works with iterated integral, homology is not good good enough. One has to work in homotopy. And so one has one starts with pi one, and one does essentially the same thing as here. This uh, one studies the monodromy, one moves, one has the same vibration, and one moves around uh, somehow these cycles, and one defines uh, the orbit. So O is the orbit, so uh, to be precise. So O normally depends on the base point, orbital gamma, is the smallest normal subgroup of pi one containing the image of gamma by monodromy, by monodromy group. Okay. Uh, now we uh, so, so uh, it, it is not difficult to show that the base point is not important. Everything is conjugated uh, uh, if one changes the, the base point, and we define a, a group K P zero. So this is the group of commutators. We have O P zero of gamma with pi one. So this is also a normal subgroup of uh, O. P zero. So we have this on one hand, and on the other hand, we consider the the, the lower central sequence in pi one. 
we start with L1 is equal to phi1, which contains L2, which is uh, which contains L2 and so on, which contains Li plus one, which is Li by one. And uh, so now the definition of the depth. A is the supremum of J bigger than or equal to one, such that the orbit intersected with LJ does not is not uh, does not contain K. Uh, sorry, understands is not contained in K. K is this uh, as P zero is, is as the base point is not important. I don't uh, I don't write the the base points. So this is the depth. So maybe somehow a few comments. So essentially the idea, so, so, so uh, why, where does this K come from? It kind of seems a little bit strange. So this K, essentially the idea is that uh, we are looking at Poincare map. So P of T uh, is T plus M mu of T plus, uh, sorry, sorry, epsilon uh, mu. Plus, etc. So it is of this uh, of this form. This is somehow the first non-zero uh, term, and uh, the idea is that this term, if you conjugate your path gamma with some path belonging to uh, to pi one, uh, it will of course modify your uh, the, the 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 Poincaré map, but it will not modify the first term. So the first non-zero Melnikov uh, function is not modified by conjugation. So it is well-defined modulo uh, k. Yes. No, no, no. Uh, when you say modified the Poincare Renat, so Poincare Renat is defined uh, on the real, real cycles, right? Uh, no, on, on any, I, I, I complexify everything. Oh, okay. it, it could be, everything could be complexified from the very beginning. Okay. I j just somehow that, I mean, if one speaks about the center problem, it is somehow uh, uh, one has more the, ca the habit to think of it real, but everything is, you can think everything complex from the beginning. Okay, so, so uh, I repeat, why this K? Because uh, K somehow uh, corresponds to conjugation by some, uh, by some path. And if your, your gamma belongs to the orbit, and if you conjugate it to some path, this means that you, at the level of the, of the Poincaré map, you will, compose it with uh, identity plus something. And then uh, you will not modify somehow this uh, first non-zero Melnikov function. Okay, and why these uh, Li's? Uh, so it is precisely the commutators who, who somehow distinguish uh, the length of, uh, of an iterated integrals. So for instance, if you have a commutator, if you integrate along a commutator uh, one form, normal usual integral you get zero but uh, if you have uh, if you take an iterated form which you integrate on a commutator you can get something non-zero so so this is somehow the commutators are correspond somehow to the length okay uh, uh, so this is somehow the definition uh, okay, so, so, so maybe a very short idea of proof. Yeah, yeah, yes, so the, the, the theorem of Gavrilov and Ilyev, it is uh, ex exactly this theorem for, uh, I mean, the first statement of this theorem uh, for, uh, for k equal one, for depth one. Of depth one, this is abelian intervals. Okay, so uh, what we think? So we think that this theorem actually is optimal. Maybe I will start with the conjecture. Formulate now the conjecture.
so, so what do we have as examples? We have examples with uh, length equal to one, length equal to two. This is what we what we know. Uh, and conjecture. So uh, there are two parts of the conjecture. So the depth K is one, two, or infinity. And two, so we know that if it is one or two, uh, it is somehow the optimal case. Uh, so if k is equal to infinity, then for any uh, j, there exists a form omega j, such that the uh, uh, Melnikov function and mu of the deformation df plus epsilon omega j is of length So this would say somehow that this uh, bound is an optimal bound. I mean, either it is somehow uh, one or two, in that case it's okay. If it is infinity, and uh, in a moment I will show you an example where we show that this depth can be equal to infinity. We think that if the depth is equal to infinity, then by choosing an appropriate deformation omega, one can realize any length of the first uh, uh, Melnikov function. So the depths depend only on F and on the choice of the cycle in F. So F, you have, you have F, there are many cycles in the fiber of F and the depth can be different from diff for different cycles. Could it be uh, as big as you want? Should, should you say gamma? Uh, 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 gamma, so, so uh, you have a Riemann surface of finite genus with a finite number of holes. So it is kind of, you don't have much choice. So the example that we have uh, it is a very simple example. So it is F is equal uh, to the product. So, so, so uh, F is a parallelogram. And so essentially, well, the, the easiest case, you take X squared minus one times Y squared minus one. And so you have two parallel lines like this and two parallel lines like this. So you have minus one, one, uh, in this sense, here you have minus one, one, no, one. I didn't draw the axis. Uh, so this is horizontally and vertical, okay. Minus one, one. And so, and the cycle that one considers, this is gamma. So take the real cycle, which is here. In this case, so what you have, you have a torus. On the torus, there are uh, four points, points, points at infinity. Your cycle gamma, maybe I take a different color here. It is a cycle somehow like this. And note that there are complex cycles which one doesn't, we don't belong to the real plane. 
which corresponds to these settles, which are somehow like this. We have to bring them all to the same point. So this kind of makes kind of a strange picture. We have something like this. And all these cycles, they correspond to uh, these other cycles on the toes. Uh, uh, sorry, no. So, so, so we go here around, simply around one point, and then we do the same thing, but passing after this point. Uh, something like this. So this is uh, this is our cycle gamma, and here we have delta zero, delta one, delta two, and delta three. Here the same, delta zero, delta one, delta two, delta three. So what we prove in this case is that uh, depth is equal to infinity. And we have an example such that, uh, example of omega, such that uh, uh, length of m mu, so the first non-zero Melnikov function corresponding to this uh, uh, omega is equal to three. So we expect, so it is better than two as in the other cases, but uh, we, we would like to have it of any length, which we didn't somehow manage to, to obtain, but we think that it exists. And let me just say that somehow uh, what is the difficulty in obtaining somehow high length of, uh, of these functions? Uh, so so, so uh, essentially, well, the key of this proof, for instance, of the, of, of the depth, it, uh, well, there is a case uh, which was studied by Gavrilov and uh, Ilyev uh, in the abelian case, and somehow one considers the matrix where in one sense one takes the cycles uh, delta one, delta two, one takes the basis of the cycles delta mu, uh, delta uh, n. These are all the cycles in H1 of uh, F minus one of T. And in the other sense, one takes the basis of forms, omega one to omega n, and one considers the pairing which is associated to this. This is the Deram pairing. Uh, what happens in the case of iterated integrals? In the case of iterated integrals, there is the chain pairing. So uh, what does it mean? So it is, uh, I don't know if it's still here, iterated integrals. So you take your somehow, uh, your, your, it's not no longer cycles, it is uh, loops. You take the loops on one, in, in one direction, uh, and in the other direction, you take uh, iterated and somehow the pairing works well, but the problem is that you will realize, uh, and for instance, you want uh, to have M1 equal to M equal to zero, uh, zero and say M2 different from zero. So this we, I mean, we manage, but let me explain just where is the, dif the difficulty. So you want to form omega such that integral of omega Long, uh, long gamma is equal to zero, and integral long. Uh, so, so, so it is easy to find a form uh, omega one, omega two, such that this is different from zero. But this form has to have a special form. We don't want any form like this. We want this form to be uh, somehow produced by one form. So, so you have one form omega, and you, you must have its de derivative and, uh, and, and omega. And so this is somehow what is difficult in order to produce high, high lengths. I think my time is up, so I will, I will, I will stop here. Thank you.